What's going on there, folks? Good evening, uh, Friday evening. The Earthmaster here with an update video on uh, this beautiful Friday evening. It is January 28, 2022, about what is it? About 7:05 p.m. And looking at the seismographs, there you can see a pretty large earthquake coming into the live seismograph stations all over the globe. This is coming off of a 6.6 .6 earthquake out in the Kermadec Islands area. You can see that uh, pretty shallow earthquake there at 33 kilometers into the Kermadec Trench. Let's go ahead and check out movement here on the latest map here on the USGS. Stand by for one second. Those are some some uh, very large signatures there of that earthquake. Here's the latest information on the map here. Right now they're still showing two sixes. Not for sure what that's about. Uh, a little bit difference on the uh, signatures here, at least far as the seconds go. Looking like a two separate quakes possibly there along the Kermadec uh, trench area that would be uh, pretty crazy if that is the case uh, so we will be checking this out here uh, as it's still showing here on the USGS map let's go ahead and see if this has been reviewed or not by a seismologist it has been reviewed this one stands at uh, magnitude 6.6 .6. and this other one kind of want to see if this has been reviewed or not as well it has been reviewed so it's kind of an interesting uh, development if this is indeed two 6.6 earthquakes uh, let's go ahead and check out the emsc while we're at it and we'll get back to solar weather here in just a little bit i was looking at some uh, uh, x-ray fluxes there on the map let's see what the emsc has they have uh uh what do they have here well, they got it here on the map, but not listed on the uh, region uh, regional view on the list there. Hold on one second. <coughs> Excuse me. 6.4. These guys only showing one earthquake within this region. Uh, 6.4, a little bit of a downgrade compared to the USGS. Also some activity kicking up here in the New Zealand area so uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that see if this uh, does indeed jump up look at this now they got another earthquake on there uh, including a 6.4 so hmm very interesting unless they're uh, I don't know this is all over the place here let's check out the uh, tsunami warning center real quick and see what these guys have on the latest Ooh, these guys are offline it looks like yeah these guys are gone folks what a time to be offline, right? Hopefully there's no major earthquake. Oh, there we go. Okay, it looks like <laughs> kind of a little freeze up there for a little bit. 6.6 uh, .6 listed here on this map. Uh, I don't believe there's going to be any type of tsunami warning or statement. Right now there is none. Zip zero. We'll go ahead and check out the national data buoy systems here, uh, which we can sometimes look at when we get wave height differences uh, during large earthquakes. Now this is not a super large earthquake at 6.6. .6. But it is relatively shallow there along the trench of the uh, Kermadec Trench area. We have been watching a uh, major swarm of activity, of course, around the Tonga region over the last uh, week or so following that uh, volcanic eruption there at the Hunga Tonga volcano. Uh, but we've seen quite a bit of deep movement up here along the Fiji Islands yesterday and today. Uh, some of the earthquake activity stretching down at 640 kilometers below the surface. So quite a bit of large-scale movement taking place down into this region uh, which ultimately puts stress and strain up here along the trenches in this region of the pacific plate and uh, the uh, tonga trench the kermadec trench area and that's kind of what we're seeing here today uh, with this continued movement i'm um, just kind of curious to see if these guys are going to uh, do anything different or not on these magnitudes so we will check back on that here in a little bit uh, going to continue the update here on this friday evening with some movement out here around the indonesia area as well quite a bit of activity ramping up here uh, some deeper movement at that we got a 535 kilometer deep earthquake here in the uh, region here that's uh, just outside the band of sea that's some deep activity here within this region we've seen all sorts of deep activity over the last couple days within this region here we also are noticing a little swarm of uptick in movement off the coast of japan into the major watch area the japan trench Kind of expecting this thing to uh, possibly possibly produce a, a pretty large earthquake here pretty soon due to the lack of, well, the lack of activity and the highly uh, accumulation stresses that this trench develops and accumulates over time. It's been all too long since we've seen a, a, a major earthquake along this area right here. 
of the Kuril Kamachaka Trench. Of course, the 2011 9.0 earthquake here in Japan, yes. But uh, I tell you what, we're still de definitely looking at some further activity uh, as the accumulated stress has been building for quite a while in this region north. Uh, let's see what else we got. The Aleutian Islands, a trail of movement throughout that region, including some deep earthquake activity as well. Looks like one earthquake around the Davidoff volcano. Maybe, uh, well, yeah, pretty shallow earthquake up there. Negative 3.1. Uh, looks like just to the north of the Davidoff Volcano and some other volcanoes there in the Aleutian chain. Activity to the east, Fox Islands. A little bit of movement along the trench area there. And also up into the Cook Inlet area where we're seeing a couple twos kick off and some threes as well. Uh, looking at the all magnitude shows movement around the uh, Denali area northward. And also a lot of activity around Anchorage uh, over the last 24 hours. Uh, let's see if these guys still still sitting steady at that. I mean, that's kind of a little on the odd side. Let me go back over here and uh, take a look at the live stream seismographs here before we continue. A lot of times on these seismograph stations here, we can see uh, signatures of multiple large quakes. And it almost looks, well, let's see here what we got. It almost looks like, at least on these seismographs here on the bottom left side of the corner, there may possibly be two readings right here of two individualized earthquakes, but uh, we'll have to see what uh, what the USGS states here as they uh, review the activity. But uh, kind of look towards the seismographs, the raw data when it comes to uh, seeing if there may have been more than one earthquake. A lot of times the earthquake uh, signature can overshadow a second a secondary earthquake in there that may be of uh, um, not only the same magnitude, but you know maybe a little bit stronger. Uh, sometimes we get that overshadowing effect. But right now, still standing at uh, three earthquakes, six, six, six. That's not good. Remember the six, six, six sequence up here? Uh, well, it's not here right now, but we had an earthquake off the coast of uh, Japan here with a depth of uh, six hundred and or no, uh, sixty-six point six kilometers below surface. So I don't like these sequences of sixes. It's not good. I like, uh, I like threes and I like sevens and eights. I see a lot of threes. Threes are my big time number, let me tell you. West Coast activity. Not a whole lot uh, within the last hour. Some movement up around the geyser activity, or the geysers here south of Clear Lake. See that uh, movement up here? Stretching up a uh, pretty good distance here. A couple, uh, what do we got? About 40 earthquakes or so, man made earthquakes, I believe. Uh, up around the Kovalo area, still seeing a swarm of movement. We've been watching this area over the last couple days, looking at about 16 earthquakes here. Just to the east of Kovalo, shaking things up here in the coast range. There is the Bartlett Spring Fault System that uh, could swore I just felt the house shake. But uh, my earthquake rock is not moving, so hmm, kind of weird. Anyway, there is the uh, Bartlett Springs Fault that runs through here north and also down to the south here. So it's kind of right in the middle of this area of this fault system, uh, at the southern branch of it. Of course, it probably, I'm guessing it probably uh, dips down here a little bit underneath the surface a little bit more. Um, I don't know why they're not showing the continuation of the fault here along the map, but it's there. That's kind of where the activity is occurring there uh, near Covalo. We are seeing some movement outside of the Antelope Valley area. Quite a few ones and twos kicking up here in this region. And the Nevada, Long Valley Super Volcano and Ridgecrest area. All kind of calming down a little bit. We're not seeing as much activity here in this region as we had seen last night. Uh, there is the uh, activity down in the San Jacinto Fault area. A little bit of movement here. San Andreas Fault, man, it just remains a sleeping giant. Unless we're looking at possibly building up a new plate boundary here. You never know. I was reading a little article, I can't remember exactly where, that uh, potentially the uh, North American Pacific Plate Boundary could be developing somewhere else. It could, uh, you never know, maybe the uh, San Jacinto Fault area might be the new plate boundary stretching up towards this area of the San Andreas Fault. I'll have to see if I can find that article. Uh, movement through the Texas area continuing, right around Pecos, Texas. Uh, areas to the east pretty quiet, got a major low pressure system developing out around the Cape Cod area. Man, I wish I could go out there and check that out. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it's a ways over there, let me tell you. But we got storm chasing coming up here this spring, so we will continue that. 
Uh, looking forward to that pretty uh, uh, pretty highly. 6.1 also off the coast of Panama earlier. And some movement into the Peru-Chile Trench. South Sandwich Islands there still showing some activity over the last 24 hours with some deep movement into this area of the subduction zone. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Just looking at the uh, seismographs here on this end. USGS, I guess it's hard to say if these guys are... Okay, looks like they got rid of one of them now. There's only uh, two six-pointers here on the map. Or, uh, yeah, 6.4 and a 6.6. Uh, I'm guessing there was probably only one. They're slow at getting around to it. Uh, we'll see which one they decide to go with. The EMSC still showing a uh, 6.4, I believe. We'll go ahead and refresh this for the latest data from these folks here, which are still showing quite a bit of movement along the uh, Middle America Trench, South America region, uh, getting in on the height, heightened earthquake activity as well. Uh, up here, uh, some movement off the coast of Japan. Of course, we see that on the USGS. So these guys reporting a 6.4 on the map here, roughly within the same location as the USGS. Also some activity here in the New Zealand area uh, with a 4.1 kicking up as well. Looks like uh, that one just, uh, wow, a little bit more on the recent side, it looks like. So watch the New Zealand area uh, pretty closely there with that movement. So these folks have downgraded it to a 6.4. They got rid of the 6.6s and uh, uh, left the 6.4 in the mix here and a little bit closer into the trench region. Uh, so, yeah. What else we got here, folks? We'll see if that stays or not. A lot of times these guys are bouncing all over the place. It happens. It, uh, it's bound to happen. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. We'll check out these folks. Okay, I forgot all about that. Did this earlier. Not for sure what's going on with it, but uh, I'll have to figure out uh, if I want to continue to move on in that direction for covering Yellowstone data. Here's a movement in the Cascadia subduction zone, southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, looking like a pretty good uptick here. 122 epicenters of tremor. That's a pretty large uptick compared to uh, the past several weeks or so. Uh, so we may see things start to pick up, but also at the same time, we may want to watch the areas closer to the Cascadia and off the coast of Northern California. We have seen some movement out there over the last 24 hours and also on the live stream seismographs not showing here on the USGS page for some reason. Um, but it's there. I see the earthquake data signatures uh, clear as day on the seismographs. So we've got to watch this area pretty closely, uh, especially when we see further tremor here after a long period of, uh, well, not a whole lot of tremor. So we'll definitely keep an eye on it. Up here in the central Oregon area, outside of Bend, right around the Three Rivers, Oregon area, seeing a little bit of earthquake activity as well. A couple small earthquakes within this, uh, the Newberry Volcano. That's right, I was reading an article on this thing. Uh, it's kind of where that earthquake activity is taking place right now at the moment. Uh, of course, Crater Lake has been relatively quiet for now. All other volcanoes looking uh, pretty mellow out here on the uh, northwestern part of the uh, states. Uh, and Yellowstone, at least according to the map here, USGS not showing a whole lot. I can run over to the Utah seismographs or their uh, they're covering the, um, the uh, activity up there in Wyoming and the Yellowstone area. Uh, if uh, I think things are going to get interesting, but for now, uh, I'm not for sure what's going on with this site. I've never gotten this, uh, but it says error cert certificate date invalid. And uh, attackers might be trying to steal your information from this site. And this site I always go to, always check out a lot. But with all the computer problems I've been having, the stream going down, at random times, I may be, uh, may be backing off that site. Not saying they're the ones doing it, but uh, uh, I'm kind of kind of weary of uh, security breaches and whatnot now. 6.4 and a 5.3. There's that secondary earthquake I believe I was seeing in the live seismographs. Uh, so a little bit of earthquake activity ramping up here, folks, along the Kermadec Trench for sure on this Friday evening. Uh, looking at the Tonga area a little bit more closer. Uh, only shows a 1, 4.6 here. Pretty deep movement here outside the volcanic chain there. All all uh, pretty neutral at the moment when it comes to volcanic activity. But, uh, you know, things obviously things can change in the blink of an eye. All right, folks, have a great Friday evening. 
Uh, we will chat at you a little bit later. There's not a whole lot going on and uh, at the uh, solar weather department, but we will check it out here real quick since we do cover that on this channel. A little bit of heightened data coming in here within the last couple hours. The three-day geomagnetic forecast calling for storming at the higher latitudes. You can see it right there on the Aurora forecast. That's the oval for forecast of potential um, probability of the Aurora being seen. Most of it higher latitudes, some of it stretching up into maybe the 40-50% chance there. So keep an eye on your skies if you have clear skies in the higher latitudes. Sea flare threat at 70 M flare at 20 and it looks like X flare at 5% from this specific dynamic sunspot growing in size pretty rapidly. 2936, uh, looking pretty, uh, looking pretty uh, monsterish, monstrous. If I can say that word correctly, there I'll, I'll spit it out eventually. It's Friday night, so uh, yeah, 2936. Got to watch that pretty closely. It's looking pretty um, ginormous. There we go. Throw another word out there. All right, guys, have a good Friday night. We will chat you later. Stay safe out there. Watch the New Zealand area. Things getting a little on the hot side out there when it comes to earthquake activity. Stay safe, folks.